Hi everyone, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. Please subscribe if you haven't yet already. It's a red button beneath me somewhere and if you click on that, you'll be subscribed to my channel. There's also a white button, bell button next to that and if you click on that, you'll get an alert every time I upload new content. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That would make me very happy. Today is the 13th in a series, the last episode video that I'm going to make about American Horror Story Season 7 Cult. The episode is great again. And I will do another episode kind of tying everything all together, but this is the last one just kind of on a one episode, focusing on the one episode. Today I am using some of my favorite and some cult classic MAC singles. This is just a, a ColourPop four pan that I took the thing out of. And yes, so if you'd like to see how I got this look and hear me talk a little bit about American Horror Story Cult, season seven, episode 11, great again. Please keep watching. Right, I have already moisturized and SPF'd. I'm gonna go in with my MAC Pro Longwear Paint Pot and Painterly. So we opened in the future, 2018, at a correctional facility where Kai is in jail and he is doing pinky power with a guard, with the female guard who is a person of color, which is, seems really predatory. I'm gonna bring you in for my eyes. I'm gonna go in a brulee all over my lid with a Real Techniques flat brush. So then these two big, tough looking guys, white guys come in while he's talking to Gloria and they start beating him up in the shower. And then there's a guy that he calls Chuck, who I think is supposed to be Charles Manson, but I'm not sure doesn't really look like Charles Manson as much as he did in the other episode, but I think it is. And then it turns out that one of those two guys is in the cult. I'm gonna go in with a decently sized crease brush and Omega in my crease. So he sacrifices, he kills one of the, one of the guys and then has to kill the other one because It'll look like the other guy was involved. I'm still unclear about what that is, but he convinces the other guy that he can't, he can't be a survivor or it'll look, I don't know. Uh, so he kills the other guy, the other kind of big guy. And, and Kai's little. Evan Peters is little and these are two big burly guys. Right, and then we are outside. I guess a little time has passed. I'm gonna go in a slightly smaller, more dense brush and brown script. So then we're outside and there's this kid, young white kid. It does seem like his, his, it's not a gang. This kid wants to join the gang. This kid who killed somebody driving under the influence in his dad's Tesla. And he wants to join the gang and Kai's very clear that it's not a gang. And I'm gonna go in with a slightly denser brush. This is a Makeup Geek pointed crease brush. And sketch. So he, joins this group and he's basically saying like we haven't made in here there are women outside ruining the world and we are going to be in here safe from all the women and kind of building up this army inside prison uh just male population i guess aside from gloria i'm gonna go in with a flat brush and all that glitters over most of my lid so then we are back in 2007 and we see how Kai got put in prison and he changes the night to a night of a hundred Tates and there's a ridiculous scene where everyone is getting out their watermelons and stabbing them, kind of practicing stabbing a pregnant woman, which is just, ugh. And then Adina Porter, Beverly and Allie in the kitchen. And Beverly is just, so broken and Allie tells her to hang on. I'm going to flip this brush and use satin taupe just on the outside edge and Allie breaks it to Kai that Speedwagon was the mole. I'm unclear about why she had to kill him. So he was the mole. I'm going to flip it back and actually add in a little more all that glitters just to kind of add in a little more color. So I'm not clear about why she had to kill Speedwagon because 
he he initially was a mole for the police because of Samuels and then he became just going to blend a little bit more then he became a kind of a mole because of this cult and for the police so and Ali we learned very shortly is working for the FBI now I'm going to go in with this tiny appropriately MAC brush from I do not know when from a long time ago in a galaxy far far away and with nylon in my inner corner. I love this color. This is a good color. And I'm gonna leave this out. I usually forget to come back in and put more color on my inner corner after I've concealed. Sometimes it covers it up. I'm gonna leave this out because I, I really do hope to remember to come back and do that. I'm gonna go back in for one more sweep with brown script just to kind of warm this up a little bit. So yeah, so I'm not clear about why she had to kill Speedwagon. I wonder like how many, like who she was allowed to kill with the FBI, like who she had a license to kill. I don't know if there was kind of a conflict of interest between the FBI and the police department, but yeah, I am unclear about why she killed Speedwagon. And she killed him after he had told her and she believed him that it wasn't being recorded, which it wasn't, I don't think. All right, I'm gonna line with my Tom Ford. So yeah, so Allie tells Beverly to hang in there, and Allie also tells Kai that it was Speedwagon who was the mole, and he's crushed because he killed his sister for no reason. And Allie encourages him to go on with his, his night of 100 Tates. Then the next night, they are putting their kill kits together, and he says he's giving them vitamin A, which I'm not sure what that is. It could be Adderall, I guess. It also just could be amphetamines. They both start with the letter A, but he is getting ready. And then she leaves and she's leaving to go get snacks, but she's leaving to go tell the FBI that now is the time. It's an interesting detail. I don't know why they were smoking, but there was a cigarette in the trailer. I definitely noticed that. Someone was smoking in the FBI trailer outside. No big deal, I guess, but it is interesting. And there's an intense shootout. Beverly kills someone, I forget who she kills. Not Kai, Kai is arrested and is brought out kind of threatening Allie. And time passes, months later, Beverly comes to the butchery and it looks like Kai pled guilty to everything and waived a jury trial because he wanted to avoid the death penalty because he couldn't possibly let anybody have any control over his life. I'm gonna zoom you out a little bit. And Beverly is wondering when the other shoe is going to drop. She's talking to Allie about it. And Allie basically says, it was, never, it was never about you. You are a woman of color and you were in a cult of, of white men and no one would believe that you were actually in that cult. Everybody thought that you were there under duress. And Allie is still denying killing Ivy. Beverly says that it's the one crime that, or the one murder that Kai does not admit to. And Ali is, is denying that she did it, but there's something in the way that Beverly looks at her when she says that basically, you know, she's known people in really crappy abusive relationships that have done a lot more for a lot less. And like, she wouldn't blame her if she had, but Ali doesn't say anything. Hourglass Vanished Foundation in Vanilla. Yeah, and then this is where Allie admits to us and to Beverly that she was an FBI informant and that the FBI came to her when she was in the psych hospital when Dr. Rudy Vincent had committed her. Then Allie's new girlfriend comes over, very, very, very short amount of time, but who her new girlfriend comes over who seems to maybe also be the chef at the restaurant. So maybe she was the chef and then became the girlfriend which kind of makes sense that you would start dating your chef instead of make your girlfriend into your chef, but that's probably what came first. And they invite her to Oz's birthday party. We are then at the birthday party and there's a phone call that comes through that Erica, the girlfriend, picks up and she is turning down an interview with Rachel Maddow, who she mentioned in the first episode. And then we learned that she also turned down an interview with Lana Winters, 
who was obviously played by Sarah Paulson, first in Asylum, and then in Roanoke, I think, also was the other one. And then she gets a collect call from a prison, and it's Kai, and he is wigging out at a public payphone outside, and I was thinking, how is he able to get away with this? But obviously, it is his cult member lady friend, who... Gloria? Gloria. It's obvious that she is the one making that possible. Mary Luminizer. Yeah, and he is, he is totally threatening her. And, and then also that's where we learn that he has learned that he is not Oz's father. Yeah, he is, he is wigging out a lot. And then we see Kai in prison, just weird, having sex with Gloria while watching television and learning that Allie is running for Senate. Then we are back in Allie's house and I did, I reviewed, oh actually, now that I'm thinking about it, before I do my brows, I'm gonna go back in with nylon. I do always forget to do that. I'm gonna just add a little bit more and maybe even put some on at the bottom. What? I'm glad I left it out. Yay. All right, so as I was saying, I did review the episode, I forget if it was Drink the Kool-Aid, I think it was Drink the Kool-Aid, where Allie tells Kai, shows him all the paperwork that he is Oz's father. That's the only episode that I could think of where they were really in the dining room. Most times they're in the kitchen or in the living room. But what I was wondering, because this episode was directed by Jennifer Lynch, who is David Lynch's daughter, and the carpet in the room, in the dining room, under the dining room table in the next scene where she's there with Beverly talking about her platform, it looks very much like the floor in the Black Lodge from Twin Peaks. So I think that that carpet was there before. It looked like there was a little bit of kind of stripey on the floor. I do think it was there before, but I, I wonder if Jennifer Lynch made this a little bit more prominent in this episode because it definitely reminds me of Twin Peaks. So they're talking about her platform. I don't know how Beverly is a campaign manager now, but whatevs. And she's talking about the fact that people think that she lacks strength. She's talking about disbanding the cults of the two-party system. But Beverly is saying that she, everybody thinks about her as this person who was manipulated by this cult and that she lacks strength, which I think is fair. And Beverly says the only way, Charlotte Tilbury, flawless finish airbrush powder, the only way that she can prove her strength is by dominating Senator Jackson, Kai's former rival. Then we're back in prison and we see that Gloria is helping set up Kai's escape. So the Tesla guy from before who is similar in kind of stature and build and everything to Kai comes into this, I think it's in the kitchen and, and he has all the same tattoos that Kai has. And Kai kills, his name is Trevor. Kai kills him and then is kind of egging. Oh yeah, it is the kitchen because he makes a comment about Gloria knowing her way around like sliced meat or something like that. And she struggles with her weight, obviously. I mean, like what, he's just an idiot. He kills him and then he's he's making her seems like help cut off his face. We don't see it. We see the kind of the beginning of it, but then we don't see the full face cut off. I would think that they maybe would check fingerprints. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I would check fingerprints. And then right as the debate is about to begin, Beverly relays to Allie that Kai has escaped and does she still want to go on with the with the debate. We also see Gloria and and Kai leaving in the stolen guard uniform. I'm going to zoom you through my lips. I'm going to use my Kat Von D Everlasting Lip Liner and Outlaw and I am going to use my Tom Ford Matte Lip Color in Ruby Rush. I'll see you on the other side.
All right, so then she goes into the debate and Ali seems to be very strong. She's going into this debate seeming very strong and kind of pushes back on Jackson when he's mansplaining to her. And then, and the audience cheers, and then someone comes up to ask a question and he says, I'm Councilman Kai Anderson. And everybody starts to duck and cover and Kai runs up and Gloria is in front and he grabs a gun from her and he goes up to Allie on stage and he belittles her and Kai tries to shoot her. He's, he's shooting blanks and she winks at, at Gloria. They have kind of a wink exchange and Gloria is on her side and we see a flashback about how Allie got Gloria to be kind of aligned with her and that's how the, the gun had blanks in it. And before Gloria, before Beverly kills Kai, Ali says there's something much more dangerous than a humiliated man, a nasty woman, which just gave me chills when I heard it. Okay. Woo. Then she newscast and she won the Michigan Senate seat, securing 80% of the female vote. And she and Oz seem to be in a really good, healthy place. She's putting him to bed. And she talks about the fact that she is meeting with some empowered women who want to change the system. And then we see her in the mirror putting on some blush, it looks like. It looks like she's using a, like a Besame blush brush, actually. But she's, she's putting blush on her face or putting powder on her face. And then she puts on a hood. And it's very similar to the hood that we saw B.B. Babbitt wearing. And, and then that's it. So I think that that means that the, the dangerous woman kind of cult, that the powerful, nasty woman thing, the Valerie Solanus kind of cult thing, maybe is still happening. So I definitely will do another kind of season recap. I want to try to tie up some loose ends and like pull things together and just talk about the season as a whole. But I liked this episode and I liked where it ended. It ended on a more positive note than a lot of other, I guess sometimes they end on positive notes, but I definitely like this one a lot. Tell me what you think. Um, sad to see it over, but I am... Looking forward to the fact that they must be working on something really interesting now. Thank you so much for watching this series or this episode or whatever you've watched in terms of this. I really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun making it. And I will have another one coming up at some point soon about the whole season. But yes, thank you so much for watching. A lot to do in the world, a lot to do on YouTube. And I really, really appreciate the time that you took to spend with me today. Take care and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.